Dr. Jollibee. Yes. What's the main point about your new upcoming book? It's about race in the 21st century and the politics of mixed race identity and how that plays out, particularly in terms of、uh, neoliberalism and whiteness, and how President Obama has gotten the support of so many different groups, and how does his mixed race identity play into people's acceptance of him and his policies? So, is that really about changing the demographics of the country, that we have a more diverse demographic of people that are more progressive, or is it more about the sort of Multicultural melting pot thing that we've seen before, but now it's being talked about as a post racial society. So, is mixed race being used, you know, in a critical way or in a sort of cultural assimilationist model? So, it's sort of questioning the importance of multiraciality and hybridity in politics today. I see. Who are, who's the main audience?、Uh, the if, audience. If there's any.、Uh, the audience. The audience、uh, includes、uh, you know, students and universities and things like that, and other、uh, academics, professors, but really it's mainly for all people who are interested in politics, interested in issues of race, social justice. Uh, mixed race identity. So it's really intended for popular audience, uh, uh, mainstream audience as well. Okay. What, what,、um, what did you intend to accomplish through writing this book? I think to bring greater attention to multiraciality,、um, particularly after post 2000 when the census changed.、Um, A lot of debate happened about whether or not there should be a multiracial category, one box,、um, or check more, you know, two or more races. And so I think since then,、uh, with the election of President Obama, there's been more attention on issues of race、um, and racism to an extent, but it's been limited in its discussion of mixed race identity. And I think mixed race identity, if done in a critical way, Can actually push us to question race a bit more and this whole notion of a post racist, or excuse me, post racial colorblind society. But if it's uncritical, then it'll just take us to the same places it's been before. But to bring more visibility to issues of mixed race identity in terms of politics, policy,、um, and how it's actually drawing. People in, you know, Obama had people from LGBT folks supporting him, young people, 18 to, you know, 30, some Republicans, lots of independents. And I think that's in part because he's mixed, and not just because they think it's great because he's mixed so that they can accept him. And it's so part of it is about sort of anti black racism, I think, that, you know, support for Obama、uh, and biracial identity. But I think the other part of it is that he actually is more. Culturally flair, fluent, right, in different ways to communicate with different types of people. Because as mixed race folks, we often have to be able to negotiate、um, different identities, different spaces. And so I think Obama does very well negotiating the different spaces that he had to navigate during his election、um, uh, campaign. And then since he's been president, he was very smart in knowing how it works. He grew up with white grandparents, he knows what. White folks are going to respond to, and that's whether they're working class, because he grew up with white working class folks, but he went to school with affluent white you know, folks as well, and so he knows both of those audiences.、Um, and so I think all of these things are important to address in terms of where are we going in the United States and globally for that matter, you know,、um, over the next decade or two, in terms of now that there's, you know, there's always been an exchange of difference. Um, cultures and ideas,、uh, but that's been dominated, right,、um, in some ways by colonial powers such as Great Britain and the United States. And so I think what we see with、uh, a lot of the changes now is, you know, particularly even with young people, they're, they're not, they're now able to really articulate these multiple identities that they have, and they're actually saying, no, we're not doing it the same way. It's not going to be this colorblind thing, it's not going to be this watered down post racial thing. Um, that's going to be more of a critical approach to saying, 
you know, yes, I'm queer, yes, I'm mixed, um, yes, I have different physical abil abilities or a uh, different body than other people, um, you know. Uh, so I think questioning, you know, what is normal, right? Um, what is the status quo is another sort of underlying point behind this book. I see. So tell me, for, tell me a last thing, um, what, what's your next step? Uh, you mean with this book or just in general? After writing this book, what uh, would be your next step? Well, after, in this, general? after this book, I, you know, I'm actually currently working on uh, some other pro uh, new project with the University of Washington on uh, HIV AIDS in American Indian and Indigenous communities. And that project uh, is called Indian Blood. Uh, mixed race, gay men, transgender women, and HIV. Um, and it's looking again at this issue of hybridity, mixed race, um, and how it actually impacts, um, you know, issues of risk uh, when you have these different sort of experiences. Uh, what are the correlations between mental health, for example, for mixed race folks in native communities and others, um, along with um, things that we know produce risk around HIV, and so that's alcohol, drug, mental health issues, and so looking at the correlation between mixed race identity, native identity, um, rec federally recognized right, tribal status, these issues and the complications that it produces, but again it's about undoing those you know, erasures and the invisibility of native people, and then specifically mixed race native people, which is the majority of the population. So um, this is to be a bit more, you know, less ideological probably than the Obama book, much more grounded in working directly with the community, that the answers, the questions, all of that will come from them. And so they're actually working with the Native American AIDS Project, um, and hopefully after that, the Red Circle Project out in Los Angeles. Um, to produce some work uh, that hopefully will lead to some national, you know, prevention models for HIV and AIDS in, in Native American and uh, Indigenous communities. Great, thank you, Dr. Jolivet. Thank you, uh, Mr. Etta. It was a creed written into the founding documents that declared the destiny of the nation. Yes, we can. It was whispered by slaves and abolitionists. 